G. <laughs> We're all the way to the letter G. <laughs> Let's get going. The letter G is, of course, mostly one big friendly curve. Let's use your double pencil tool because it's the easiest one to get started with. One curve. And I want to point out that unlike in the letter C where we added this stem, I'm not doing that on the letter G because I felt like there was enough meat to the letter without having that. So I'm just going to let that, the end of that curve stay up there. And then the horizontal bar starts virtually in the center of the circle. Do you see that? Here's the middle and it's horizontal straight out. And then the vertical shaft, of course, you have to make sure that it's parallel in line with your italics guidelines. And it extends below the letter and comes down about one third of the distance of the letter and then has a straight foot on it. Not a, in my opinion, not a curved foot, but a straight foot is a little bit more elegant and in, in keeping with the rest of the letters. Let's do that one more time. Curve number one, curve number two, a horizontal bar starting right in the middle of the letter, and then a vertical stem in line with the italics guidelines coming straight down about a third of the way, one third of the height of the whole letter, and then a straight foot at the bottom. Does that make sense? Now let's talk about a lowercase g. And you've got your guidelines there in front of you, right? Let's do a lowercase g. Very predictably, a small curve. And then very much the way I... The, this is similar to the top of the letter A. If you've done the letter A, leaving a little gap and have the horizontal... the vertical stem in line with your italics guidelines and coming down and ending in a straight foot. Now let me do that again. Instead of pushing the pen at any point, I'm going to draw or pull the pen with every stroke. So I begin then with this curve and then do this curve you may have heard me say before, the traditional approach to calligraphy is you always pull the pen. That's the traditional rule. But the fact is that professionals and experts will sometimes push the pen. And when do you do it? When you can get away with it. When the pen is behaving in such a way that allows you to do it without getting caught. <laughs> it's basically, you want it to look as though every stroke was pulled or drawn instead of pushed. And then the vertical, again, Coming down this way. Now this side, see I'll do this one this way. Instead of cheating and pushing that foot, I'm going to do it the right way and pull. Does that make sense? So if you can get away with it, you're welcome to push the pen, but it's it, technically, officially, you're supposed to draw it all the time. I'm driving the experts crazy here, by the way, the ones that are, that are purists, because I'm telling you the truth <laughs> instead of the rules. The rules are whatever works, works. Let's go down to the felt tip pen and draw the capital letter G, quite a bit smaller than the, than the double pencil. One big friendly curve, another curve just coming to an end and leaving it. The horizontal starting in the middle, make sure it's horizontal. It's very easy for that to go a little bit uphill, downhill and so forth. So you want to go just as slowly as you have to to make sure it's horizontal. And then the hurt, vert, the vertical stem coming down and ending in a nice little foot. I think that's good enough. I'm going to do the lowercase one. One curve. Leave a little gap. And two curves. Do you see how I did that with basically two strokes? Now let me do it in the purest manner, which would be one, two, three, four strokes. Drawing the pen instead of pushing it at any point. So I do this curve first, this one second, this one third, and this one fourth. I hope you're understanding the distinction between the purest approach and the practical 
and actually realistic approach to the way many professionals. If the pen is behaving, you can get away with it. If it's not, then you need to use the pure approach where you're always pulling. Now let's do, go to the, to the uh, dip pen, which again, is this is where it matters. We use a dip pen primarily because the, the skinny part of the stroke is thinner than a felt tip pen. Uh, and also you can dip the pen in all different kinds of colors of ink and so forth, so it gives you more creativity. I always have a piece of scrap paper available, a post-it note will do, so that I can clean my, so I can get my clean lines going and get my brush or my pen behaving in the manner that I want it to. Okay, nice, friendly first curve, second curve, starting in the middle, then doing a vertical, and a foot. Uh, so, so, do you see how this first curve, I didn't bring it out quite far enough, so this, this vertical, you got the idea. I say those things because I want you to understand when they happen to you, you are not doing anything wrong, you're perfectly normal, that's the way it is to do calligraphy. That's why you practice over and over and over again, so that little imperfections like that get weeded out of your lettering over a course of time. One of the nice things about calligraphy, however, is that you can literally see an improvement in one 10 or 15 minute session, let alone a 20 or 30 minute session. You can actually feel yourself and see yourself getting better. That's a, a good enough capital G. Let me go now to the lowercase g with a pen. One stroke, two strokes, three strokes, and four. Now, you'll notice a couple things here. Do you see that this doesn't quite connect? That's an easy fix. Again, I want you to know, perfectly legal, perfectly legal. And there's a little bit of a hangnail up there. I'm going to try to tie it up. Not too bad. Let me do one more of those. Again, using four strokes, one, two, three, and four. Good enough. Now, what if this is the last letter in a line of text? There's not really a lot you can do the, to the letter G. If you want to get dramatic and have some fun with it, of course, you could add a loop to the bottom. Of the, let me do this one quickly so I can get to... You could do something like this and that would be acceptable. Uh, if, if you want to connect the letter G to the next letter beside it, most of the time you don't. You just leave it disconnected. Now if you feel like that is just way too inconsistent with the way you're doing, you could extend this part of the curve up to your next letter, uh, whatever that may be. But that's letter G. You're doing a great job. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Let's keep going.